That's awesome. That was beautiful. Man, the guitar playing was beautiful. The singing was beautiful. The harmony was beautiful. Okay. Well, with that said, <laughs> man, um, let me... Normally, we would have a time where we would meet and greet, but we're holding that off right now, just for now. And um, so we'll get to our announcements. The kids can be dismissed, okay? They can go to their, to their uh, study rooms. Man, that was good, wasn't it? Dang, that was very good. Ah, boy, no kidding. Um... Wednesday evenings are back, okay? Yeah, Wednesday evenings are back. Uh, potluck at 6, Bible study at 6.45. We'll finish up with the book of Exodus where we left off, and um, I will have some, um, some good uh, things to teach you from there. Now, women's Bible study is going to be on January 16th and January 23rd. And since Linda is standing up, I assume she wants to say something. Okay. Imagine that. We are finishing up our last lesson in the book we are studying right now. But if anybody wants to join us, we would love Perfect. Okay. 10 a.m. right here in church in the fellowship room. All right. Let's see what else we've got here. Now, this is this was in my bulletin. It says, was this little handout in your bulletins too? Okay. Okay. So um, we need we need some refreshment volunteers. Uh, we will we will buy the the food and the drinks, etc. We just need two people per month to work together, uh, and it's only for a month, okay, and then somebody else can take it over the next month, so it's not like it's a big commitment. Uh, so if you could help with us to go get some goodies and have them at the church Sunday morning so that the rest of us can enjoy it, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Uh, they've got some suggestions. You'll notice that they are all, all very healthy. Cookies, donuts, cupcakes, pie, <laughs> sweet items. Wow. And there are healthy options, thank you. Cheese and crackers, fruits, nuts, vegetable tray, bagels, cream, cheese, or be creative, filet mignon, uh, you know, those type of things. Yeah. Yeah, save your receipts. And the, what, what, what was that one? Eggs Benedict. Eggs Benedict. Oh, poor Benedict. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Flo Downing takes care of the prayer requests. Her name are is uh, her name and numbers in the bulletin. So uh, if you have anything you want to uh, add or subtract from the prayer list, you can give her a call. Um, if you could help the teachers by being a teacher's aide, or if you're a teacher and you'd like to uh, help with the the kids, um, that'd be just wonderful. We do need some some help with that. Um, your your uh, tops, um, that's take off pounds sensibly, are going to meet on Thursdays. And the Psalm 96, 1 to 3 says, sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth, sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all people. Wow. Well, <clears throat> let's take our offering, shall we? Is that okay with everybody? <laughs> Kathleen's up here going, okay, okay, let's. <laughs> I can't begin to tell you how, how blessed um, this church is. God has really blessed us in so many different ways. And you are a blessing to this church. Yeah, so we want to uh, continue to worship him and, and um, 
and uphold his word, and that's what we're going to do. We welcome all of you new folks and the old ones, okay, <laughs> or the ones that have been here before. Maybe I, sh maybe I should say it that way, right? <laughs> Let's pray. So, Father in heaven, thank you so much for everything you do for us and for everything that you've given us. And Lord God, it's, it's, not about, it's not about what we can get from you. It's about what can we give back to you because we've given, you've given us everything. I mean, we deserve nothing and you've given us everything and you're willing to give us more than everything. And that's amazing, Father. So we pray that you'll bless this offering. We do pray for our country, Lord God, that you'd help us in this country, that you'd help our president and the, the, the incoming administration, Lord God, that you'd convict all of our hearts of our own sins, and that, Father, you'd start a great revival in this country. Lord God in heaven, we also want to pray for our servicemen and women and ask that you keep them safe and bring them home safely. Lord God, convict the pastors and teachers, Lord God, to study your word and to bring your word with clarity and with, by means of your spirit, Lord, to their people. We promise to give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Well, well, we hope you keep doing that. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. So, Father in heaven, we do come before you, opening your word, asking you to explain it to us, Lord, to fill us with your spirit. We confess to you that we're sinners saved by your grace, Lord God, and we ask that, Father, You'd forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. We pray that your spirit will fill us and that you will bless us. And Lord God, that you will be blessed. Grant us knowledge and discretion, understanding and wisdom as we study your word. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll wait till these folks find their seats. So this pastor friend of mine sent me this email this morning. These words were found outside on a church billboard. Here's what it said. Due to COVID-19, we are asking rioters to work at home and destroy their own stuff. <laughs> oh boy, I'll tell you. So, I've picked a title for this message and the title that I picked is what time is it what time is it where are we in the whole scheme of God's planning and God's plan you know I'm going to continue to bring you guys message and next week's message is going to be entitled the lie and it'll be I promise you won't be bored you can turn to 1 Thessalonians if you want to, chapter 5. We'll start there, and we'll see what else we can dig up in the Word. 
I'm going to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 11 to you. So just to pay attention to what Paul says to this church. This was a young church. Paul had ministered there for a fairly short period of time. It was a big town, Thess- Thess- Thessalonica. That's a hard one to say, by the way. Thess- Thessalonica was a town of about 200,000 people. And they had good access by sea. They had good access by land, uh, a variety of culture. Um, it, was, it was also a, a town that had a lot of immorality in it at this point in time. It was under Roman rule, but it was a fairly lax rule. Paul was asked after a couple of months to leave town. And when he left town, the believers that were left there, which were young believers, were um, persecuted uh, by not only the Jews, but they were persecuted by the town's people who were immoral. Paul writes this letter, this first letter. This, by the way, is the probably the second earliest letter that Paul wrote, all right? And here's what he says in verse 1, chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians. He says, now brothers, so he's writing to Christian people here, okay? Now brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But, this is a contrast, you brothers are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let's not be like others who are asleep. Speaking of spiritually destitute or spiritually lethargic, okay? But let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who uh, get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He, speaking of Jesus Christ, died for us so that whether we are awake, meaning alive, or asleep in this case, meaning dead, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in, as in fact you are doing. So Paul is writing this church that is full of new believers, fairly immature. He starts out in verse 1, Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. Well, why not, Paul? I mean, times and dates are kind of important. Well, the reason he says we don't need to write it to you is because he wrote it to him in chapter 4. So turn to chapter 4 and go to verse 13, and we can see what Paul said to this church previously. He says this, brothers, again, he's writing to Christians. We do not want you to be ignorant. Now listen to me very carefully, okay? God does not want us to be ignorant. What did he say to us? He says, I want you to be as wise as what? And as harmless as doves. He wants us to be wise, and yet he wants us also to be meek. Meek, not weak, but meek, which is strength under pressure. He says this, he says, Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep. That's about those who die. You know, we have hope. I've done pretty fair amount of memorial services slash funerals, whatever you want to call them, 
And you can really tell the difference between a Christian service and a non-Christian service. You know, the non-Christians, let me ask you this. If you weren't a Christian right now in this world, would you be worried? Would you be depressed? Would you be looking for that panic button maybe? Because it's there somewhere. But as Christians, you know, we have the faith that God takes care of his children. But he doesn't want us to be ignorant, my friends. This is the instruction manual of life. Learn it. Everything written in here is written for our uh, learning and for our experience to guide us through this life. It's very important. And unfortunately, we have a lot of ignorant Christians. Not, and I'm not saying that nasty, okay? They just, they, they, they know such basic things about the wor word of God that when trouble arises, they're like the, the ones that went into thorny ground, you know? Uh, the, the troubles of the world overtook them and, and they, they, uh, they get depressed and lonely and etc. Paul says, brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant <clears throat> about those who fall asleep, those who die, or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep or died in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede or go before those who have fallen asleep or died. Now here he explains in verse 16. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Isn't it interesting that at the end of chapter 4, Paul says to encourage each other. And at the end of ch uh, chapter 5, verse 11, he says, encourage one another. Let me tell you something. We need to be encouraging each other, especially in these times, because these times are not very good times right now in the United States of America as well as the world. Now let me go back here to chapter 4, verse 15. Paul says, according to the Lord's own word. What word was that? Well, I'm going to read it to you. I'm glad you asked. John chapter 14, you all know it, but I don't want you to, to, to miss this. Okay, now listen to what Jesus says. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do you want me to repeat that? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Now this isn't a suggestion. This is a command. Why? He says, because, he says, trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. The King James Version says mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go, and he did, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may know, take you to be with me, that you may know all that you may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. So Jesus told his disciples that he was going to go away. Now, this is John chapter 14, so this is somewhere toward the middle, probably, of his ministry. And back in chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians, it says this. Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write you. 
He's already written him. He's told them that the rapture is going to happen. He's referred back to Jesus' words that says, If I go, I'll come again. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust in me. It's going to happen. I will come back. That's a for surety. Now, I will tell you this, and I've been at this for quite a while. We are way close to Jesus Christ coming back. We thought in the late 60s and early 70s that Jesus was, you know, right at the doorstep. And from his perspective, he was right at the doorstep or is right at the doorstep. Why? Because a day with the Lord is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day. But the times have changed so much and technology has changed so much that Jesus wouldn't have and couldn't have come back then according to what we know about the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, etc. Now, he goes on. He says, now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. He uses two metaphors that Jesus himself used in Matthew chapter 24. He used the thief in the night metaphor, and he used the next metaphor, which is as labor pains will come on a pregnant woman. Let's go on. It says, while people are saying peace and safety destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape this is a double negative in the grape in the greek it means they will definitely not escape they will no in no way escape the people that are saying peace and safety the people that are not paying attention to what's going to happen or what's happening the people that do not believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior are not going to escape these times. They're going to say peace and safety, but that's the last thing that they're going to experience. Jesus, or Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 about this particular uh, instance. Let me read it to you. He says this. He says, listen. Now, when an apostle tells you to listen... You probably want to listen, right? He says, listen. I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. He says, I tell you a mystery. This was not known before. We will not all sleep. In other words, we're not going to all experience death. But we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye. In other words, in a millisecond. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. Wow. Think about that for just a minute. Now, you know, we go on living. You know, uh, we've got our plans. I, well, let's see. After church, we've got a board meeting. Then after board meeting, probably going to go home, and i got to clean my kitchen and my bathrooms. And then after that, i got to go, Right? Right? What would happen if the rapture happened during our church service? <laughs> I mean, in the twinkling of an eye, in the millisecond of a second, boom! Hopefully we're all gone. <laughs> if you're not gone, you got a problem, okay? <laughs> Let's put it that way. Back to Thessalonians, here's what he says. He says in verse 4, chapter 5, But you brothers are not in darkness. We are not in darkness, my friends, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness, so then... Let us not be like others who are asleep. This means either they are 
spiritually dead or they are spiritually lethargic, okay? But let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But, here's your contrast. Since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. We are to pick up our armor. Go to Ephesians chapter 6 real quick with me. Now you've all read this several times. You've heard sermons on it, but I'm telling you, don't ever get to the a place where you're complacent about the Word of God, okay? Listen to this. It says in verse 10, Ephesians chapter 6, Paul says, finally, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. Now, when somebody says, put on something, that kind of gives you a responsibility, doesn't it? I mean, nobody's going to dress us. I don't need anybody to dress. Well, maybe I do. <laughs> hmm, my wardrobe has been... I told my kids, I said, I, I, when I die, I'm going to leave you my wardrobe. They said, no, please don't. <laughs> Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on. This is your responsibility to do something. You have to put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Guess what? The devil is a schemer and he's got a scheme that's custom made just for you. We're going to see that in just a second. Listen to this. He says this, for our struggle is not against Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> got that? It's not. Our struggle is against, it's not against flesh and blood, it's against the rulers, it's against the authorities, it's against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. The first heaven is our atmosphere. The third heaven is God's place of dwelling. The second heaven is space, and in that second heaven... There is a battle going on that you and I don't see, but the Bible says it's real. We do not fight against flesh and blood, my friends. This is a spiritual battle. What's happening in our country and what's happening in the world is a spiritual battle between good and evil. Now you can say, oh, those Republicans are all evil, or oh, those Democrats are all evil. No, they're not all evil. Some of them are good people. Some of them are evil. But I'll tell you what, Satan knows who the evil ones are. And he knows who the good ones are too. And he'll use anybody and anything to accomplish his goals. And what his goals are is he wants to make us as Christians ineffective in our walk in the Lord. He wants us to be ineffective. He wants us to be distracted. He wants us to be thinking about other things. He wants us to be ignorant. He wants us to worry. He wants us to be depressed. He wants us to be oppressed, despondent. He wants us to read the newspaper and look at the news and go, oh, woe is me. Woe is me. You know what? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Let me give you a hint of what he wants us, and we'll, go, we'll, go, we'll get back to to Ephesians just a second. Listen to this, okay? Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. 
No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. The angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Peter said something very interesting to us in 2 Peter chapter 1. I'll read it to you. You don't need to turn there. In verse 16, he says this. We did not follow cleverly invented stories. When we told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we, speaking of the apostles, were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory saying, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain and you will do well to pay attention to it. That's Peter. Well, Ephesians says this. He says in verse 13, therefore... Therefore, and whenever you see therefore, it's there for a reason. Okay? What's the previous verse say? For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers. These are powerful, gar powerful angels. The word is arche, which we get our word archangel from. These are very powerful angels. They're against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world. These are fallen angels, demonic forces, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenlies. He says, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that if the day of evil comes, no, do we have a little rebellion here? What does it say? When. It doesn't say if, does it? Guess what? It's going to come. Guess what? It's here. it's here. It's here, my friends. And I will be expounding on that next week. Expounding. Oh. I'll be talking about it next week. Expounding sounds so ministerial. He says, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when... The day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. What is truth? God's word is truth, isn't it? Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Stand firm with your belt of truth buckled around your waist. In the Roman legion, the belt was, was used to hold together the whole armor. Okay? It was also used to hold the weapons that they needed. It says this, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. You know, because of Jesus Christ, we are looked at by God as being righteous. Now, on our own, mm -mm. no, 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 unrighteous. What do we deserve? Mm. Punishment, separation, hell. What do we get because of Jesus Christ? No punishment, reward, heaven, and inclusion in his family. I'm telling you, this is the deal of the century that God has offered us. He says this, 
Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Have your combat boots on. He says, in addition to this, take up the shield of faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You see, logic then will tell us with faith, it's possible to please God, right? Okay. Take up the shield of faith, which with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. All of them. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, Paul says, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Now back to our scripture in Thessalonians. Here's what, we're going to finish this up now, okay? It says this. I guess I got to get into Thessalonians before I can <laughs> tell you. I'm in Timothy, sorry. He says, now brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write you. Already written to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come. Like a thief in the night, suddenly, while people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, spiritually dead or spiritually lethargic, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled. Keep yourself under control. Keep your thinking under control. When you are faced with temptation of whatever kind, be controlled, be self-controlled. That's what God is looking for. God is looking for obedience. He says, those who obey me, love me. Those who love me, obey me. Obedience is the test of love, my friends. He says this. He says, but since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith. How do you get faith? Faith comes through hearing of the word, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, take a little challenge. I call it the five and five challenge. Spend five minutes every day praying and five minutes every day reading God's word somewhere. Guess what that, guess what'll happen? That'll turn into 10. That'll turn into 15. And you'll find yourself just growing in the Lord and and having just a great time of fellowship with God. And you won't even have to really work at it. It'll just come. It'll just, God will bless you. I started out with about four people on my prayer list. I don't know how many I got, but I got a few. A lot more than four. He goes and says this. This is, and this is beautiful. Listen. He says, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. This is one of the most important verses to remember in the Bible. He says, for God did not appoint us to suffer wrath. What is wrath? Wrath is God's righteous anger. Yeah, that's what it is. It's God's righteous anger. And guess what? He's going to unleash it during the tribulation because that's going to be the time of great uh, rebellion against God 
it's also going to be the time of great revival for God. There's going to be a lot of people come to know the Lord during that time. He says, for God did not appoint us to suffer wrath. What did he appoint us to do then? He appointed us to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. You and me have an appointment with salvation. Isn't that good news? It's really good news. You know, there's lots of bad news around us. But I tell you, the news that comes out of God is good news. He's promised, if I did the most for you, when Jesus Christ died on the cross so that you can be saved, as your father and you as my children, I will do more than the most. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't think of what more than the most will be, but he's going to do more than the most. Now, last verse says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. Well, <sighs> this world is not my home. I'm only passing through. Treasure laid up. Somewhere beyond the blue. Yeah, my friends, you know, pray for our president. Pray for the incoming administration, whether you agree with them or not, okay? Pray for the pastors and teachers that are around the world that they study and teach God's word accurately. Pray for your families, your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers, your bosses. The time is getting short, my friends. It just is. It's just getting short. And if you can't see it, you haven't been looking, okay? Pray with me. Dear Father in heaven, please forgive me for my sins. Please cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Help me to know your word. Give me a hunger for it. Bless me, Lord God, that I might bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Johnny, what are we singing? By the way, today was a prelude for next week. Next week's going to be hot and heavy, okay? Just want to let you know. Look in your hymnal, number 92, you'll find some words. We're going to sing this all the way through, just the first verse, including the tag. Including the tag.